Here at the Ambrosetti Forum on the banks of Lake Como this time last year, there was a real sense of crisis for the policymakers, business people and academics gathered here about the very future of the Eurozone. Would Greece leave the currency union? Would the currency itself survive? This year, the atmosphere is very different. No one has even mentioned the possibility of the Eurozone breaking up. That's not to say that participants here feel they have nothing to worry about. Collapsing currencies in many of the emerging markets, last year lauded as the only engine of growth in the global economy, have caused many to fear that there will be another leg of the financial crisis there. Well, some of the success of emerging market last few years was due to uh, luck, not just to good reforms. You know, you had uh, China growth, you had the commodity super cycle, you had near zero rates and quantitative easing advanced economies and search for yield. Now this party is over, the Fed, however, slowly is going to exit and normalize. China is slowing down, the commodity super cycle is over, and now we've realized that this country did uh, first generation of reforms, macro stability, some privatization, liberalization, but those more fundamental second generation reform, the increased productivity growth did not occur, and some of them actually now have significant macro and financial vulnerabilities. Another hot topic has been the effect of an end to the era of easy money. The end of quantitative easing is expected to have a serious impact on global growth. At this moment, it's essentially central banks that are pumping money inside the economy. Credit, which is the ability or the desire of private sector to give credit, not money, credit in whatever form it is to the other parts of the private sector is a non-existent thing or very little of it exists. Therefore, it means that uh, Westerners themselves haven't really yet agreed uh, as to what's wrong. Uh, because you've got your governments coming in. If my government were out there issuing the money and nobody that's private would be investing in Peru or Latin America, you would have said this is a highly unstable place. I think that's true for the West. I don't think anybody has yet bit the bullet. And the Eurozone itself is not out of the woods. Progress on key reforms like banking union has been slow. And political risk is high, with elections in Germany mentioned frequently as a source of uncertainty. Indeed, the risk most concerning business people polled here at Ambrosetti was political uncertainty in Italy itself. That, last year, was one of the very few Eurozone worries people didn't have on their mind. The risk in Italy are basically are twofold. Risk number one is uh, nothing happens. La dolce vita continues, which is uh, what happened the last 20 years. You know, Italy had uh, one of the worst GDP growth in the world of the 150 countries. And hence, if nothing happens because of status quo, that's a, a, a very bad scenario. Status two, the second situation is we could have, uh, uh, you know, this uh, series of uh, in political instability led by individual problems, uh, which are nothing but exaggerating uh, the Dolce Vita, because basically no one takes any decision. Uh, what investors want is a government that takes action and solve the structural reform, the six, seven points that the IMF has pointed out last year in their annual report on Italy. And if only, uh, you know, what the government should do in Italy, just read the, annual, the report of the IMF and execute it.